So in this topic, we will going to look at working with strings or how we can really manipulate the strings and get the desired output based on the business rules that we have. So a lot of things to cover over here. So let's start with something very simple, defining a string. So string one or S1, where I simply say, I love Julia, okay? So since we are working in this, it will give us some motivation, right? Since there is a lot to cover, we have already covered a lot so far. So keep it up. String one, I love Julia. And let me enter this. This is a simple output, which it has given to us. Now, if we need to identify the length of the string, in most of the cases, we need to do that. So to do that, we have length function and pass the object S1 and it will give you the output 12. That means the string is 12 character long and it counts the spaces as well, since space is also a part of it. So 4 and 5, 9 and 10 and 2 spaces, 12. So it's a 12 character long string. Now after this, you if you want to let's say identify the last character, so for example, you have last index and then S1 is also 12. And I recommend that if you want to identify the length of the string, use last index and not length. And the reason being is, it is performing a less computation compared to this particular function. It calculates the character for the entire length, entire string. However, it just looks at where the last character is and accordingly give you the output. So it's much more efficient than this. So whenever you need to identify the length, use last index, all right? After this, if you need to, let's say, access a particular part of the string for example whether o v e or something you can use the indexing so for or like this for s1 within the bracket that's what we have been using so far to access the element within the layer within the, uh, the for example arrays or sets or dictionaries and so on and so forth so what we need to do is s let's say 4 so what we got is o one two is a space three and four at fourth character you have uh, on at the fourth index you have the zero the o similarly s1 if you want to identify what is at tenth l over here so this is a way in which you can access these strings uh, particular characters after that if you want to access a range for example everything for love which is starting from three to six three four five six so that will be your love right similarly if you want to access the part where julia is written you can access from eight to twelve as i so I told you it is starting from eight to twelve over there right this is the part julia is present over there so this this is how uh using the range very quickly you can access either uh a specific part or a complete part of the string and get the output in the desired format now you you can also test whether a string is sky or contains unicode character so there is uh, this function is sky and s1 it is true if it is some other characters than sky then it will return false now what we can inst uh, to join these strings so we are changing the topic now i'm talking about joining the string so let's say we have love and we have julia if i want to add this you can't just go ahead and simply use like this plus what you need to do is you need to use asterisk to combine these two love star julia and you will get love julia to get a space you can have a space over here or prior to this and there will be a space afterwards right if you need to write let's say a particular string multiple times for example you need to write love 
five times you can use cap five it will write love five times one two three four five right similarly if you need to write julia you can write julia use cap in normal scenarios it it used to put a cap on the particular value but here in this case it will just put it on the string we have put it on the string and it is writing the string five times right apart from this another method that you can use is the string method we have seen it earlier so what it does is you can specify love and julia just to have a space i have added a space and once you give the output it will add the string so you have multiple ways in which you can write or combine the strings now if you need to split it split the string so what you can use is simply the split method very very straightforward s1 so i love julia so it's been split it by a space as you can see it's a default parameter since we have not specified by default it has seen that space is present and that's how it has gone ahead and split it but you can also specify for example split s1 and e right so i l o v at the e it has split it has removed e and julia is is a different string altogether right similarly there are like a lot of things that you can do s1 l o v e i julia so as so you have got the idea about how it is splitting the string what if if you need let's say every single character right if that's what your need is that's also is possible s1 and just two sing two double quotation that's it opening and closing and you will get i love julia right so that's how you can do it sometimes numbers are coming to you in the form of a string and if that's the case you can also convert it into a proper number if it is a string it coming as a string so parse and uh, put the int64 if it is an integer int64 and then the string so generally uh, you will get it in a form of uh, object or a data frame value or column so but here just for the example i have mentioned the string directly so it will give you 100 as a number right and uh, you have the option for float as well since i have a 64 bit system i am using the float uh, the float 64 the 64 in case of a 32 bit system you will get 32 so um parse float capital f yep 100.5 is what you get next is uh, finding a string so what you can do in that case is let's say you want to find i i love julia in that you want to find i then you can use in so in i in is in function is something we have used earlier also if you remember so in same similar way we can use it over here and here within the string s1 we are identifying i so it will show that i is something which is present in this so it gives true or false like a statement whether uh, the particular value or particular string is present or not right and uh, if there is a need that you that you want to find out the multiple characters then you can use the function occurs in and see love s1 false why because it's capital l over here but what we have is small l now it is true right so it gives true and false similarly you can find the first occurrence of the value for example find first and you want to identify l when it has occurred first in s1 so it has occurred at the position 3 right similarly um, if you say find first for a combination of values like love in this case and you will say specify the object the string object 
3 to 6 at this 3 to 6 space or the range you have the love present over there next is replacing and to replace it the function is also straightforward replace the object name as one the string object and what i want to replace let's say i want to replace love with another form of love adore right i adore julia it's been replaced now but if i let's say write s1 what it gives me s1 is i love julia so you need to make sure that to store or to make this permanent s1 equals to this if i do that and again do that my string is now permanently changed so that's the last thing i wanted to show you and that's pretty much in this topic and i will meet you in the new topic in the new video with this new topic